Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Ice Age Sea Also Earth. Contact Report 055. Well, then I have here a question concerning our Earth, namely concerning the Ice Ages. How many Ice Ages has Earth had, and what exactly are they? Then I will gladly answer them, at least to the extent that I can do so according to my knowledge. The Ice Age, as you call it, is usually called the Glacial Period, according to your linguistic usage. It is a term for a time and at the same time for a process and a condition of a planet, namely when a world is completely or partially subject to an icing due to climatic changes, which you very inaccurately call a glaciation, because there are both small ice ages and large ice ages, and of course total ice ages, in which the whole planet is covered with ice. In this natural process, entire worlds or, as in the case of the Earth, only large areas are covered with inland ice masses due to temperature drops caused by the Earth or extraterrestrial conditions, atmospheric changes, etc., which usually form gigantic glaciers. As I said, these processes are completely natural and also necessary for the development of a planet. This occurrence of ice formation is also subject to a certain cycle— which can be determined according to the size and type of the planet with a simple mathematical calculation, which results from the sevenfold nature. With the Earth, for example, or especially since your question refers to this world, the cycle lasts an average of 700,000 years, which means that on average every 700,000 years, a transformation appears, which is fundamentally initiated carried out and completed through a great glacial period. Between the cycles of the glacial period, however, interglacial periods or petite ice ages, which you call interglacial periods, also take place continuously. And since the Earth is already a planet that is evolutionarily very far after the Sun, it is no longer subject to a total glacial period unless special terrestrial and extraterrestrial influences bring about something else. But only very large areas are covered by ice masses, while the remaining areas, such as the Arctic and Antarctic and the glacial regions, become ice-free with a global shift of the climate belts. If the ice mass then disappears in one area, then another area is already preparing for a small or large glacial period. That's quite interesting. According to your interpretation, we would now have to skate into another smaller or larger ice age, which, however, still lies in the distant future? Of course, the Earth has been preparing for this for a long time, but the recent ice advances are no longer called ice ages, but stadial times. And it is true that everything is normal, that a new ice-forming period of extreme cold is still far away. Aha, uh -huh. you now said that this process repeats itself on average every 700,000 years, so we must have had four ice ages in the last three million years? Sure, but there are still several interglacial periods and ice ages in between. Contact Report 057 as I have already mentioned, on average and to some extent every 700,000 years, a great glacial period takes place on Earth, which corresponds to the value of a great ice age. Between these great ice ages, there are different interglacial seasons, that is to say interglacial ice ages, or small ice ages. Their cycle is about 350,000 years on average. The glacial periods usually cover 1 to 6 to 1 4 of the Earth's surface, while the interglacial periods cover 1 15 to 1 22 of the Earth's surface, 
Although for both Ice Age types, enormous differences can occur both in relation to the area covered and with regard to the timings of the occurrences here and there. It is now easy to calculate from this that this misguided geological person, also with his new assertion that there have been ten ice ages on Earth in the last three three million years, again makes a false and misleading assertion without truth, because with 2,800,000 years, their four great ice ages and their eight interglacial periods have caused new transformations on Earth. In total, it can be seen that 12 ice ages covered and changed the Earth alternately during the last 2,800,000 years, while the Earth is now preparing for a new interglacial or stadial period, which will reach its peak in about 160,000 years. The second subsequent ice age, for which the Earth must already prepare itself by terrestrial and extraterrestrial influences, finds its climax in approximately 500,000 years, whereby this will then again be a great ice age. With that, you have answered the question exhaustively. One thing, however, is not yet clear to me. I have been told that the so-called interglacial or between-glacial periods are simply a continuation of the glacial masses, which push very far forward and slowly retreat again. Your answer, however, says that the interglacial periods are real ice ages. Something does not seem quite clear to me here. The question might be qualified, because earthly geological science lives in the misconception that a planet has only one real ice age, which always repeats itself, and that the interglacial ice ages are only extensions of the glacials. With the repetition now, Namely, the ever-reappearing of the glaciers in the cycle of about 700,000 years, they have recognized the truth, but they, the scientists, are unaware of the average 700,000-year cycle. It is, however, completely alien to them that the cyclic interglacial periods, which we also call small ice ages, are also actual glacial periods. They therefore live erroneously in the assumption that the interglacial are only glacial ancestors. But in reality, this is not the case, because the interglacial periods are true cyclical ice ages, which have nothing in common with glacier migration, although these actually take place in a cycle of about 70,000 years. However, these are pure glacier advances and glacier migrations which have an Earth-regenerating effect and which also occur due to climate changes. These glacier advances and glacier migrations can be described as small glacial, that is to say, small glacial periods, but they can also be divided into two different forms, namely larger and smaller, with a period of glacial degradation prevailing at present, which scientists will also establish over the next 20 years. Thus, the last large glacier advance of this form took place on the Earth about 60,000 years ago and will be repeated already in 10,000 years, to which the forerunners on the Earth already now make themselves felt, just by the forthcoming rapid dismantling of the worldwide ice masses, also in the Arctic and Antarctic. The small glacier advances or forays have a cycle of about 35,000 years, with the last such event occurring about 18,000 to 25,000 years ago. After the cycle can be calculated, thus with the next large glacier advance, also a small advance follows, whereby, however, the surfaces of the Earth covered by the ice masses will be in different places. That answer should really be enough. On the other hand, I do not know any more about it either.